start off with so or rather label this one frontal view and so you're going to start off by drawing a larger circle on your paper and keep going in a circular motion until um, you achieve something that's resembles or is very, very close to a circle. And it's imperative that you draw very lightly in the beginning and we can darken as we go. Um, also, if you make any mistakes, right, we have an eraser, um, but we don't want to resort to just using it off the bat. So from here, I want you to mark the top and the bottom. So this is one unit, right? Now draw a line going down the middle of this circle. And then from here, mark halfway for yourself. And then once you have halfway, I want you to split each half into thirds. So just use your best judgment and mark a third for the top half and thirds for this bottom half as well. So what I'm doing is I'm going to carry these line off to the these lines off to the side. And if this larger area is one unit, this inner section that I asked you to draw and to mark is two thirds. Let's carry this line out all the way to the edges, excuse me, until you touch the circle. And we're going to complete that by creating a square. So this square is two thirds of this circle. So once you have that marked, I'll give you like a few more seconds actually. All right, so we have this square inside of our circle. Now I want you to complete it by making a, so here was our Y axis, make the X axis. And if you have an eraser, you don't have to do this part, but you can lift up this line. I like to kind of keep it in there. Um, I really, I don't, I wouldn't use an eraser for this part, but I want to really illustrate the shape of the head. So here we're actually getting at what's, you know, what uh, is called the cranial skull. So thinking about your skull and its shape. It's almost a round sphere, except for we're chopping off this, the sides here, the side planes. And that side plane, if you touch, if you just put your, place your hand on the side of your head. Um, that's what this is describing, right? Is this flat surface here. And this line right here, I'm gonna carry this out. This is the hairline. This middle of the square is your brow line. And then this line right here, it indicates the bottom of the nose. So your face, so not now I'm talking about the head itself, but the face. Your face works in terms of thirds. So the top third is from the hairline to the brow line. So this is the brow line means this is where our eyebrows are placed. And then the middle third is from the brow line to the bottom of the nose. And then the last third is from the bottom of the nose to the chin. 
And because, and this is a very idealistic base, but because um, we are working in terms of thirds, the last third, the way you can get this distance is you measure, and I'm measuring from the tip of the charcoal and I'm marking my finger as a rule of measurement. So this is one third of the face. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna come around with my hand and mark it on my paper where the chin should end if it follows the rules of, of thirds. Now faces actually don't in real life. They all deviate some way, somehow. And then I'm just double checking, right? Again, using from the, my finger and above as that measure of third. So from here we have, again, the hairline, brow line, bottom of the nose, and the chin. Pull this line all the way down. What used to be the center of the circle, the center of the sphere, the center of that square, is now going to be what we call the center line of the face. And then from here, we can, well, let's complete the chin. So, or your jawline, excuse me. So again, in thirds, and it, there's just so much math to the face or to the portrait, but I want you to focus on this section. So from the bottom of the nose to the chin and mark about one third measurement. So one third from the top, one third from the bottom. And ghost this line in there. So lightly draw it. This right here, when we're pulling the jawline down, you're going to see a larger change in the angle of the jawline. So more drastic, right? And then this bottom third is the ball of the chin. So I'm gonna draw this ellipse or oval-like shape to signify and help me distinguish, okay, this is a round surface. I'm gonna make sure I draw that chin with the curvature, the proper curvature. And again, so here I'm just making a more dramatic change in the angle. And then we're going to place our ears. Remember, we chopped off this section of that sphere, of that circle. So I'm going to place our, my ears here. So the ear really depends on whether you have, uh, it's a, just a slight marker, but it depends on whether you have a free or a uh, attached earlobe. So this one I'll draw as a free hanging earlobe. And then this one will be attached. attached earlobe. And then, so for the free hanging earlobe, you're gonna come down, you're gonna start above. So it should touch this line, which is equal to the bottom of the nose. And it should touch this top line, which is equal to the brow line. So if this is a free hanging earlobe, I'm gonna come down first. I'm gonna touch that line, and then travel back up and around. Again, I'm going to touch that line and I'm going to come back down. For the attached earlobe, it's almost the same thing, except for we're going to start at that line. Come up to the brow line and then go right back down. You, I would say, don't do this. Uh, maybe I should have precautioned that, but choose one or the other, right? Typically, we're only going to have, we have like, if you have a free hanging earlobe, you probably have it on both. But what I want you to see, I'm going to switch over to just the main camera, is that, and I think that the more interaction you can have, the better. So if you were to take your hand and uh, with the, your pointer finger, touch the top of your ear, and then with your thumb, touch the bottom of your earlobe. And this right here should be the distance between your brow line and your nose. Right when you're standing straight up, you know you're in correct posture or a neutral position. If you run this line across, you're gonna touch the the brow line and the bottom of your nose. 
right? The, the fact that this runs parallel to each other. Um, but that distance uh, more times than not is equal to the distance again to the bottom of the nose to the brow line. Back to this drawing. Um, before we get into these facial features, we're just going to complete the head by drawing the hairline in there. So this, we don't have a photo reference just yet. So I want you just to make up a hairline, right? Whether it's, you know, just give that person some sort of hairstyle in a way. And then the, again, this right here is the cranial skull. So the second you add hair onto it, the top of the head doesn't, it's not going to stay there anymore unless the scalp is exposed, right? If you had like a part in the hair, um, uh, give yourself a little bit of volume. And come around, right? So again, if you touch those guidelines, that's prop what that indicates is that there that is the skin. That's where the actual skin is. So depending on what the hair act looks like. Okay. So a person has a hairline of some sort. All right. So um, the thing that might be the hardest to place in here and to work around is probably going to be the nose. Um, I'm going to show you on a separate sheet of paper. Um, it's, I would say keep following along on yours, but I'm gonna draw on a separate sheet so that way um, I can at least draw a little bit larger for you or in greater detail. So the nose, especially from this frontal view, is you want to start off, um, let me draw those brow line again, and the bottom of the nose. So keeping with the same markers here. The bottom of the nose, uh, in a very simple, simple way, this is that center line. You have one large sphere in the middle and two smaller spheres on the sides, right? This is adjustable in every way possible to fit the nose that you're drawing from, whether it's like photo reference or a person in front of you or the mirror. Um, and let's mark halfway down. And then from this top half, if you can please mark a quarter, so splitting that half and half. And what that's going to do is give us the bridge of the nose. I want you to slightly make this uh, this line here, pulling these lines in to the bridge of the nose, and you're gonna widen them out as we go to the nostrils. And what I'm gonna do here by separating or drawing these lines as well to this center sphere, uh, to the ball of the nose, I'm trying to distinguish the different um, planes of the nose. So right, if you have, if there's natural lighting, sunlight, um, or overhead lighting, the light is coming down at this angle here, right? So this is like sunlight hit comes from above and it's going to hit here. That's why there's so much highlights. If you look at photographs, especially during like the golden hour and all this stuff, you're gonna see this, the front plane casted in highlight and these two side planes in a bit of a shadow, right? It's not so drastic, right? It's still daylight. It's not like a, some kind of Caravaggio setup or a chiaroscuro, but this helps you see um, one that it is a three-dimensional form that's, that's folding and has two side planes, but also, okay, how do I logically go about shading this and thinking about this in the round? So at the bottom, I like to section this off with a sine cosine wave. So I'm gonna start high go down low, and I'm following the shape of the nose or the nostrils. This general shape, um, and, go, and again, this is, this is pretty much a geometrical approach to drawing the nose, 
but this shape right here, because uh, if I'm th again, I'm thinking about this in terms of being three dimensional, um, this is going to be casted in shadow. And let's say there's like this, the shadow underneath the nose. I want to kind of carry out a bit. Um, it allows me also to place in the nostrils or the, the actual um, holes. So I'm going to draw them in. And what I really want to do is leave a space for this fat, these fatty cell tissues um, of the skin and the nostrils to come around. And what that is going to do is it really gives you a convincing, a more convincing three-dimensional form. A lot of these characteristics depend on, or the shapes of them depend on the model that you're drawing from. Um, but this right here, right, these three spheres is exactly what we have covered in the beginning lessons, which would be the that ball and with the cast shadow on the tabletop, right? So you're taking all of these principles that you've learned earlier and just learning how to put them into practice, especially when it comes to drawing the human form or the portrait in, it, in general. So this line that I'm darkening up right now is called the terminal line. And if you remember, there's uh, this small spot at, towards the bottom of the sphere called the um, refractive, reflective or refractive light here, um, which is the natural lighting coming up, coming down, and it bounces and gives some sort of a quote unquote highlight to reflect reflective light, um, which it just means like it's not as dark as its surrounding, as like the in in the shadows. So what I the reason I point this out is because I want you to, whenever you're shading a nose, try not to go all the way down to the nostril and leave yourself a little bit of room there. So that that's to show me that this form still continues more and is curving. Whenever you have like a harsher, like if I were to shade this all the way down um, with equal value, what that indicate, what the drawing is telling me is that the form ends at a at a very sharp angle, as opposed to it rounding off and it being more of like this three dimensional form. So I'm lightly going back in here, but you know, shading the bottom of the nose, leaving room for highlights on the ball of the nose. And I'm going to jump back over to my portrait. and just catch up with you guys. So again, I'm gonna halfway, a quarter, that's gonna be the bridge of the nose. I'm just gonna place this thing in here. And remember, again, just leave the little bit of space in between. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and draw the eyebrows. And again, you want to have this coming in and in towards the bridge of the nose, and then it tapers out towards the brow line. So the brow line is exactly where our eyebrows are being placed. I want you to place the majority of the eyebrow on this line. It's going to help you get the proportions correct for the rest of the drawing. Uh, giving yourself enough room for eyes, things like that. But please recognize, when we're, especially when we're drawing from life or from photo, that you need to give yourself enough space for that opening of the eye. Like if there's a lot of room here or not, you know, how close do you place the eye towards the eyebrow? And the, I guess the last note that I'll say about this for now is that the eyebrow, they're typically not black right? You're not going to press down and give yourself the darkest value you can with your charcoal or graphite. You're going to go slightly less. Like, I think this is more adequate as an eyebrow, as opposed to this being like a very dense, thick piece of hair or a patch of hair. 
Right now what I'm doing is I'm drawing these vertical lines here. Um, and these are just guidelines to help me out. This is like the most idealistic face you can possibly draw right now. Um, and then I'm gonna take again this measurement from the brow line to the bottom of the nose, chop it in half. So what I should have idealistically are two squares on top of each other. I want to draw two more squares going one place on the left and one place on the right. These are where we place the eyes. And I want you to lightly come in here and draw two spheres. So if you notice, you have so if this is that brow line, it's the bottom of the nose, center line here. So halfway. It's about two squares there. And then this is what I call a T square. That's literally a different term, but this is where we place the eyes and the nose. And again, halfway through this or a quarter down, we have the bridge of the nose, the nose itself. Three different planes, okay. So the actual skull, its socket The, the socket recedes back into the skull, right? So um, the reason our eyes received any light or the reason they have light sources on them is because the eye, uh, the ball of the eye is, is, is in sphere, it's close to the shape of a sphere. And so that's why we're drawing this as though we're drawing the entire eye eyeball. Um, oftentimes the eyes line up with the bridge of the nose. So I'm gonna draw a line and I'm trying really hard to keep this parallel. Um, you're just gonna have to continue. So like when we draw, um, when we're drawing live and we're drawing for real, what you need to do is take a step back, look at your drawing from a distance and be honest with yourself, say, okay, maybe I deviated. I need to like pick this. Um, I need to make these more parallel, more even. Um, oftentimes, even for somebody like myself, I stagger the eyes and I have to really slow down when I'm drawing them, bouncing back from one to the other, uh, or drawing one and then carefully drawing these lines parallel across. So that way I can draw the other one and place it correctly. So the opening of the eye, uh, and the, this just depends on the person that we're drawing, but we're not drawing somebody right now. So these are just basic rules. The opening of the eye often lies somewhere along the nostril. So there's your tear duct. I'm drawing those right here. And each eye has a different eye shape, but in general, it's almost like a, a trapezoid or this like rhombus per se for the opening of the eye at the top. And it seems to be more curved and rounded at the bottom. Now, the we have to do something to get the crease in the eye or the top of the eyelid. Um, you want to use a thin line. Again, don't use your like a the blackest value you can. Don't press all the way. But you do want to show a good amount of value in that line. So that way we know that the eye is being creased there. These are just ways of how to get a portrait to look more like that person. And then for the bottom, uh, if you for like the bags underneath the eye, I would say at first try value. Um, the second we start laying down line here, it may age the person too fast, um, almost too quickly. And so I caution on the side of using tone first and then, okay, maybe there's like, there's a, a small line that's placed underneath the eye. 
But I, again, I wouldn't necessarily resort to line being my first solution to the problem. And then with the eye, um, the distinction for the opening of the eye is on the bottom side. You can see the actual rim a lot of times. So I'm drawing this like faint line in here. And of course, depending on the size or the scale that you're drawing on, you may or may not be able to achieve this specific line. Instead, you may have to go back in with an eraser and like see if you can lightly pick up some value because that is the lip of the eye is receiving or the lip of the rim is receiving some sort of highlight that's being placed in there. And then you have your eyelashes folding down and they're very sparingly drawn in. And again, be very light. Uh, for the top eyelashes, you have the liberty of pressing a little bit harder down, right? Like I'm, I'm not, uh, I, at least right now, I'm not invested in drawing each individual eyelash in there. And instead I'm using the width of the charcoal to get like a thicker, bolder line or values in there. Um, and we don't draw the rim of the top of the opening of the eye because of the fact that the eyelashes are, so they're curling up, the, they're going up this way, they're curling up. And so it covers that rim as opposed to the bottom eyelashes where they curl down. And so you're still able to see that rim. The iris itself, is half of the eye. So what I'm doing here is like, I'm taking this unit or I can do it up here. So if that's one unit there, I'm gonna half it. And then I'm gonna half these halves to make them quarters. But the iris itself is one half of the eye. And I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna lightly draw so I can get a good circle. I'm going to lightly draw this iris in here. Most of the time, you're going to see that the iris sits slightly above the opening of the eye. Um, sometimes you get to have this like sliver where you can actually see the bottom of it. Um, but that's the normal placement of your iris. Your pupils are dependent on the dilation, the amount of light that's being exposed for that person. But I'm going to go ahead and just give you an example, maybe, of what it might look like as you draw an eye. Maybe put some highlights in here. And then I'm going back over, uh, kind of smoothing out these tones here. Now, when you're drawing, you also want to pay attention to what I call spatial recognition. That's a vague term, right? Like, I don't know who the heck uh, uses that term besides somebody like myself, but you want to measure the distance and you can follow the shadow from the corner of the eye, the outside of the eye, and it goes up and around to the eyebrow. Um, also along this, this crease, uh, well, on both ends of the eye, you're going to see these like darker moments, these shadows lie in there. And that's how you know how to, where to place some of these shadows. They do carry towards the center and right above the eye, but they are significantly darker here on the outsides. So I'm gonna head back here, um, quickly draw in my eyes. Given top eyelids, bags underneath the eyes. And then from here, so if you remember, I said we're going to, this bottom section, we're going to split into thirds. The top third, that's where the jaw shifted. And then the bottom third was the ball of the chin. This top third is the opening of the mouth. And what you can do oftentimes, the opening of the mouth, 
sits perfectly or parallel to the iris or both irises. So, but that again is the corner of the mouth. That's not necessarily where the lips end, but it's the corner of the mouth. And the mouth itself has like these wings or check marks on them. Again, this is all a frontal view. So if this is the mouth. This is the line that which it goes to. So these are the corners of the mouth. The reason you have this shape here is because they're the muscles that go around the mouth form this bean-like shape. And often kind of bulges, uh, cause it to bulge up in a way. So this is the center of the mouth. You're going to draw a sphere that light that slightly goes uh, crosses this line here in the middle, and then depending on who we're drawing, what their lips look like, you have two triangles as well. For the bottom, I like I prefer to have a rectangle. Um, and again, you're just really responding to what you're seeing. We don't have a photo reference for now, but um, these are just guidelines. So the bottom of the lip, I prefer a rectangle here in the middle. And what's noteworthy about the bottom of the lip, the excuse me, what's noteworthy about the bottom lip is that the pigment of the lip ends before the actual like volume of the lip ends. And the way we, what that translates to in drawing is that you know when I'm shading this in and I'm giving that bottom lip some tone, although the pigment of this like darker um, lip color ends sooner, I still want to define it based off of the actual fold of the skin. And so that's why I have like these two different lines going off on each side. And those pull up um, before the ends of the mouth, where the top lip it goes all the way to the corner. And really work, this is like, you know, using the ellipse. Um, you guys were drawing vases or cups and bowls and things like that. You really want to work to having this shape which is parallel, right? Or symmetrical, excuse me. Um, both equal on the left and equal on the right, as much as you can. The top lip is darker in pigment, but also lies within shadow. And again, I'm leaving some room here to have like a little bit of reflective light, reflective light. And then like, if I'm gonna de continue developing this bottom lip, I'm gonna go back in and add like some highlights here, maybe add a, a highlight at the top of the top lip. But you really want to reserve highlights for right above this top lip. Um, and the reason for that, um, and it echoes the side profile or the profile. We'll go back over that when we get there, but it's because of this shape right here. If we have this hourglass cone, and again, I'm constantly referring back to what is natural lighting or sunlight. If this sunlight is coming down at this angle, this top plane is receiving direct sunlight, right? Or is receiving sunlight directly. And therefore, like if I'm gonna shade this drawing in, um, what it would be like in real life, I'm gonna leave that tone there. I'm gonna leave that there as like the white of the paper. This bottom cone is receiving sunlight as well. Like the sun is hitting the surface. So if it's a three-dimensional form, just has a little bit of shadow here on this backside. But because this top cone 
is not receiving sunlight at all, it is casted in shadow. The reason this here is important and I'm gonna reference back to this when we do that profile, but is because if you were to look at your own lips and touch them, you can feel how the top lip recedes back, like it's pulling back and the bottom lip. Uh, so this is your top lip here. It's gonna have darker pigment. And then your bottom lip is receiving the sunlight, receiving that natural lighting. So we'll go back in here. And then your the last thing to do here is um, there's a shadow underneath the bottom lip until you hit that ball of the chin. And that is a frontal view. Does anyone have any questions for Chris before we move on? Chris, can we take a five minute break? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so good time to start with pencils. Close your eyes, drink water, stretch, and I want a little bigger. Are you guys are giving me tiny heads on the big piece of paper. So the next study that we're going to do, we're going to try to see the three quarters. Each paper can be done for you. Or each quarter can be done for you. state um, as an introduction to portraiture in general. So um, we're going to start off, if you can, uh, draw a circle on your paper again. Um, this circle is supposed to represent the cranial skull. So you see following the forehead. And of course the braids are, the weave is in there, but you can follow along with like the back of the skull here. So I'm gonna start off my circle. I'm going a little bit smaller this time, but uh, that's just because I'm gonna leave some room up here for, uh, for the bun at the top. But of course, you draw big, draw big. Okay, so starting off just as before, we're going to have our circle here. We're going to mark the top and the bottom. Let's mark halfway. Once we have that halfway marker, we're going to split the top into thirds, split the bottom into thirds. So we're looking for, and this time, instead of getting a, um, a square, we're actually drawing a circle here. So it actually, we're looking for, and then this is that flat part of the head that I was referring to. This is the part that we chop off from the sphere to get the cranial skull. Again, it's, this, it's the same method, but now in a profile view and we now we need the X and Y axis of the head. So what, like, how is the head being tilted? How is it facing, right? So we're in a pretty, pretty much, it's slightly, slightly off, but it's pretty much in a profile view um, with our model facing towards our left-hand side. And the way I'm going, or the way I know I know how to draw, okay, this is the x-axis and it's gonna be at this angle here. It's not parallel, it's, the, excuse me, it's not uh, horizontal completely, not 180 degrees, it's slightly tilted. And the way I know that, and hopefully you can see the mouse here, is that you're gonna connect that line from the top of the ear to the brow line. Or you could go from the bottom of the ear to the bottom of the nose. For me, this line is less, indicative just because of the fact that like um i i just prefer i just say that i prefer to go from here to here um to give me that marker if i can see it um sometimes the bottom of the ear is a little misleading but i'm gonna so i know i'm gonna draw this line here now 
I'm going to need the y axis. So this is the x axis within this inner two thirds circle. The y axis acts perpendicularly, right? So it, there's a 90 degree angle here, but that's how I know to get this marker. The ear is placed in this bottom quadrant here. And again, we go from the top. The top of the ear is parallel to, or yeah, it's parallel to the top of the brow line or the brow line itself. And the bottom of the ear uh, runs to the bottom of the nose. Now, this is where things start to deviate. Like traditionally, I would say, we're gonna make these lines parallel. But as I can see here in this photograph, um, this line doesn't exactly run parallel to this line here. And matter of fact, if you watch my pencil, it's probably more towards, like it goes past, I would say, horizontal and tilts a little bit down. And so this is us using our observational skills. And then I'm going to run this one. So things kind of deviate a bit. I'm going to run this one more or less parallel with the brow line. So this would be the top of the hairline. So remember, face works in terms of thirds, one third, one third, even if these aren't exactly even. So we can tell, we can already see that there's a larger distance from here to here um, because those lines opened up and they're not parallel. But I'm gonna take that distance and I'm drawing the face here or the rest of the face. Um, and I'm gonna measure about one third and I'm going to use the top of the brow, the brow line to the bottom of the nose. And I'm going to run that over to mark the chin. And again, the chin, if you can feel it on your own jaw, excuse me, the jaw runs about to the where the ear is. Sometimes it's placed slightly behind. Um, here we can see without looking at the like being able to touch the model's jaw, you can see how that how the jawline wraps all the way back to the ear. So that's what we're drawing here. I'm gonna, now I'm focusing on the model to try and get this in correctly. I have something to work towards as opposed to earlier where we're making up a lot of the facial features. And then this right here is just the, the fat of the neck. It's like looser skin and connecting it from the head and neck, head, neck, and body connection. So I'm going to draw the back of the neck here. And be sure that you include you know, the mass from the muscles. So here you see um, it tapers in quite a bit, I would say from the volume of the neck here at the beginning towards the connection where it, where it hits the body. There's a natural curve in our spine, right? We have our cervical vertebrae, which attaches from the skull to uh, with the top third of the spine, ta uh, top section of the spine attaching from the skull to the spine itself, the cervical cervical spine. From here, I'm going to draw the hair of about what I think the hair looks like. And so this right here is really um, getting at what we learned earlier about still lifes. So you're maybe you need to cite this line, like literally holding your pencil out to the projector, um, towards the projector and measuring the angles of things or maybe this is more like gesture drawing to you and you're just following along with your eye and pencil. Okay, so I have the hair placed in here, the jaw and the neck and body connection. Okay, so we're gonna start to build the facial features from here. So I'm, I can either choose to work from the chin up or the hairline down. And the reason I say that is just because of the fact that I don't wanna start in a place, uh, I wanna build off of whatever I've already drawn. 
So I'm going to build off of the hairline moving down. And that, that's just the safest way to work to hopefully make sure that your portions stay correct in the placement of everything. So I'm drawing the forehead now. And as I get to the brow line, I want to pop out a bit of um, volume here because the eyebrows do protrude off of the forehead. They, they poke out a bit. And then here, and you can, again, you can try and see, okay, does this really line up with what we just learned? So halfway through, um, and then I'm gonna do another half. So a quarter down from the brow line to the bottom of the nose should be about where the bridge of the nose is. And I think it works out pretty well. Um, then I'm gonna follow along again, looking at the model and tracking my pencil along with my eye. Going to draw in the nose. And if you notice, you see how the nose, like all these facial features, uh, specifically the nose and the mouth sit on top of the face. So, you know, as I've drawn this line here and it, it will shift over time, um, I need to understand that these facial features are coming off of the face. You don't want to draw them receding in. The person just isn't going to look um, correct anymore. They'll lose their likeness. So I'm trying to make sure I draw the nose, you know, being placed on top of the face. I'm gonna quickly get this nostril in here, leaving that space in between. And then I'm going to, again, just give myself guidelines to work with. So we go one third down is the opening of the mouth. One third down is the ball of the chin. So if this is the opening of the mouth and we can adjust things as we go. Um, again, there's just guidelines, just placeholders and we work around everything. So for the end of the mouth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at where the nostril ends in this crease in the cheek and try and follow along until I get to the end of the mouth. Then from there, I can draw the top lip. It does pull down a bit and it curves back out. Remember to get that little wing in there, that little check mark for the end of the mouth. And then on the bottom lip, and you see a constantly, I will make these like circular forms, these more organic shapes. Um, and that's just me trying to search uh, for the volume of that form. Uh, and again, that's the same, uh, the same approach I have with a still life. It's the same approach I have with a figure. So everything you've done up until this point will help you those same techniques. And then I'm going to pull this down. So I have the bottom lip drawn in. I'm going to pull this line in until I get to the that ball of the chin. And then I'm just going to double check and make sure that I drew this chin correctly from earlier. Um, giving a little bit of detail here in the neck. Not completely necessary at this point. Um, but I just want to make sure that it's connecting back up to the ear and then just getting the overall shape of the ear. You're going to see, and I'll draw this, maybe we can look at a single study of an ear, but you're going to see this Y shape um, in the ear itself. So it's the, the letter Y. It's in there. And that's just describing like the cartilage and the folding of the ear. And then lastly, we have to place in the eyebrow and the eye. Um, you can give a quick, for the side that we do see, you can give like a quick little, um, I don't know, wisping of your pencil to indicate those eyelashes on the other side. And then a little bit of volume or space right here, which has that, that top eyelid, the top of the eyelid there. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to pull up from the nostril. I'm trying to follow along and see, is there anything I can use to begin placing this eyebrow in here? Um, I see that there's a highlight along the side of the face. I'm just going to lift that back up, uh, take off some of that charcoal there. You can go back in, and if it helps you, draw the, draw the shape of the highlight itself. And then I'm going to block in this eyebrow here. And right here where you see the eyebrow start to curve, that should be where this inner two-thirds circle overlaps on the face. And then using that spatial recognition, follow along with your eye in your hand. See if you can find where the opening of the eye is. So that's right here. This corner is where the eye, um, the top of the eye sits, and we have that crease in the skin. I'm actually going to move this eyelash down. I don't like the way that was placed. Um, I'm going to draw the top of the eyelid. The iris is very, very short in this, more like a sliver. I'm going to pull the opening of the eye, the bottom of it, and pull this up. Um, what maybe is getting in my way is that I, I used too dark of a tone here for the bottom of the eye. So, you know what, I'll just erase and redraw it. So even when you're drawing these thin lines, think about the, your tone, your use of tone. So I'm going to make that a little bit lighter on that side and then heavier for those top eyelashes. So I can press down a bit harder or make that line a bit thicker. Uh, and then giving the, the crease in the skin surrounding the eye, so a little bit of a bag underneath the eye. And then we can double check everything. So if I run a line parallel up here, how does or run the line vertical? How does the end of the eye, end of the mouth and the opening of the eye line up? It seems that objectively, like if I'm going to look at this, whew, I got to move something. Either I need to move the eye itself a little bit further back, or I need to move the mouth a little bit forward. Um, I'm going to choose because it seems like this is correct to me as far as like the distance between the eye and the no and where the bridge of the nose sits. And this is just showing you, okay, I made some mistakes. I understand where the mistakes were made. Maybe I need to, I do need to adjust it if I'm gonna be objectively honest with myself. Um, and maybe that also means that some other things need to be shifted around, but for now, I'm just gonna focus on moving um, the placement of the lips and especially for working at such a small scale the slightest bit of change um, makes a huge difference so please don't like don't think you have to move it completely um, like a full inch or you know an absurd amount of distance for your scale um, again maybe it, it's exposing that i have other problems or other issues in this drawing but again, just to show you that there's like, we all are getting this right and wrong at the same time. There's a lot of uh, learning that goes into each portrait drawing. So that using, again, using the Loomis method, this is how you draw a head in a profile view. I should probably finish out her hairline here. So I'll let you catch up just a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna pretty much get into some time drawings for the remainder um, that I am here.
while you're drawing, I'm going to show you. So this was an ear that we drew in the first class period. Um, and it's just more of a study. Um, it's pretty similar to what we have here. The, my advice, especially this one is such dramatic lighting with light and darks. Um, the way I would go about it, especially at something like, right, like this is almost the size of my hand, um, something at this scale is what helps you is when you're like, it's an old Greek style of drawing where you draw the, like think about the Renaissance age, they were drawing the, both the form, but also they were drawing the shadows. And so it kind of helps you to, if you decide that you want to use line as a tool, um, as your strategy for drawing something, um, you can draw the outline of, uh, draw the, or outline the shadows and then go back in and fill it in with tone. Um, that was the, the big distinguishing factor when, when you're drawing like uh, something like an ear, which has so many folds to it. And again, you can see this Y shape here in the cartilage of the ear. But um, yeah, stay light on those lines. They need to be thin. Um, again, especially for something like this scale, at this scale, but make them um, lighter and reserve those darker lines for, excuse me, make them thin and reserve dark, like think of line as well as um, something that inanely has value, right? A darker line means it's pushing it, like whatever you're drawing with a dark line, it pushes that object or that thing forward and closer to the viewer. And if it has a thin line, something faint, um, or they're all thin, if it has like a lighter value line, it's letting it recede back into the form or recede back into the background. So um, sometimes we, we press hard whenever we know, okay, this is definitely where this thing is located. Um, but you also just need to think about, okay, um, maybe I stick with very faint lines, very um, both transparent or um, lighter value lines and thin lines when it comes to something like the lips because they're so delicate. And a lot of it is within highlight as well as shadow. Um, where like something like the eyes and the eyelashes, I really want to make that as, or the this area of the eye, I really want it to be bold and pop out. So I decide, okay, I'm, even though it's a thin line, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker than normal. Um, traditionally, when you have a profile view, the shape of the eye typically is a triangle. Um, so you'll have like, this is the top eyelashes coming in. You have the iris. It's slightly curved because it's like slight curve. Maybe you can or cannot see it. Um, but to know that it's there. And then you have the bottom of the eye, the opening, maybe some eyelashes here, a crease in the eyelid. And then maybe some tones here. But This is what a, your eye will traditionally look like. And then here, it's almost the same, um, but it's probably just more so like this triangle, which opens downward. At least that's what I read it as. And then of course, tailoring it more towards this model here. So it's, it opens up at the bottom more curved. I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Let me see. So we've done a, frontal view, profile view. 
we'll do a three quarters. Right, maybe I haven't drawn in a second. Well, yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that since it faces the other direction. So this is a three quarter view. Um, I'll start off with the Loomis method just to get you started. Um, and then I'm gonna pause and switch over to drawing or maybe restart and draw it like I would um, with a more intuitive approach. So for instance, the Loomis method, we're gonna find the cranial skull. Um, is this okay, by the way, Caro, um, that the, like, is that light enough that you can see on the projector or is it too dark? That works, yeah. Okay. okay. Chris, can we just watch you do the movement and then follow the gestures part? Say that again. Um, do you want us just to watch the Loomis and then join you when you do the gesture? Um, sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that works. So you guys just want to watch him do the Loomis, which is a little more mathematical, yeah. right? It's almost graphing the face. And then the second will be more gestural, which tends to be the way we go anyways with some measurement. Okay. So and you can just walk us through. Well, again, we always start out with the circle, um, the cranial skull. And just like this is more, this is similar to the uh, profile view. So we're looking, if this is a sphere, we're looking to chop off the side of the face. Um, that That's in the profile view, that inner two thirds circle. And now because it's a three quarter view, Um, now that that chopped off part, that chopped off section, that flat section is being turned this way. And so I'm trying to find, okay, where in here is that two thirds surface, um, that two thirds inner circle. So again, I'm gonna go from here, chop in half, find the inner two thirds measurement. And it's going to look more like an ellipse than anything else. And I know that this circle, um, the edge of this circle, um, you, when you draw the X and Y axis, the edge of this circle here is where that brow line meets up. And again, it's where the eyebrow starts to shift downwards. So this point should describe this point right here. Um, and for that, that's how I, I, I guess that's why I'm trying to communicate that how far do I pull this circle out? Yeah, I think it's somewhere in there. And I'm gonna pull up slightly um, to draw the brow line. If that's the brow line, this is the X and Y axis right here. And I wanna keep these lines parallel now we have something a lot different going on in this image because the mouth is open. So that's gonna throw off the bottom portion of the, like, how do I draw the jaw? But for now, so we have the hairline, brow line, uh, bottom of the nose. And then I'm just going to leave this, let's say it's in the thirds. And I'm gonna give, just give myself a little bit extra room here to work with the chin. So this is that center line running down the middle of the face. On the other side of this circle or the other side of the sphere is the other chopped off section of the head to make it flat on both sides um, where we would place the ears. And I'm going to just lightly draw in where I think the chin is located. So again, brows, eyebrows, bottom of the nose, hairline. Um, then from here, let's go ahead and lock in the hair. Once again, we're gonna pull above that initial sphere, um, indicating the volume of the hair. 
pull this out. And as you draw, keep in mind the 90-10 rule. 90% of the time, you should be looking at your photo reference, which is over there. 10% of the time, you should be looking at your model. Um, yes, there are times it's reserved or at your drawing. There are, it is reserved for you to just clearly only look at, um, at your drawing and like what you're doing there. But specifically when we're like blocking in um, the form, you really wanna keep your eyes um, paying attention to your imagery. Since this is about where I need to be in this, the nose. Uh, if this is the end of the the contour of the face, contour meaning like the our outline, our line drawing, I want to pull. Like I want the nose to be close. It, there's a bit of tension here, um, and I'm gonna just kind of block in where I think this nose is being placed. And remember, this is the bottom of the nose, um, which also means I may have to like slowly go back and like, okay, readjust my thinking on where that center line is. Just be open for the drawing to be a process, not necessarily um, having everything down all at once. And, this is supposed to be thirds, but this is the opening of the mouth. Um, I can think about the opening of the mouth itself. Um, so I'm drawing the negative space as opposed to the positive space, which are the lips. I'm drawing the negative space, which is the teeth, the tongue, and things like that. Just again, trying to give myself guidelines to work within. So um, going from simple to complex. And the edge of the mouth, like those lips, they get close again, not quite to the contour of the face. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna move my line, which maybe that looks more like I drew the lips initially, but I was really just trying to draw the opening of the mouth. Um, and then the eyebrows are placed here and here. So I'm following this natural curve. Remember that there is like this, um, the face comes out a little bit around the brows and then on the forehead, leaving space for the eyes. Take your time when it comes to this part, make sure everything is parallel and makes sense. You know, how much distance do you have between one and the other? For instance, I need to pull these down. So when I was talking about that spatial recognition, um, like how much space between that eyebrow and this eye? I should probably, you know, again, I should drop it down so that way uh, it makes more sense. Like she just has more, there's more surface here, more surface area. Things may get cramped, but we can continue just pushing through and uh, adjusting things as we go. That's, this is a three quarter view. I think that's good enough to like, how would you approach this as far as the Loomis method goes? Remember, start off with your circle, find that inner two thirds circle your X and Y axis, draw, this is the brow line, hairline, bottom of the nose, chin, remember face works in terms of thirds. I'm giving myself more room here for the opening of the mouth. Get your center line in there. And you have your, you know, the, the skeletal system, these like building blocks for drawing a face. or excuse me, drawing a portrait. Um, here we can move on and actually draw for real. Everybody, I'll let you know.
time drawing, how much time? How much time? What do you think? Uh, what is it? Uh, can you do a 12, 15 minute drawing? Yeah, we can go 15. Okay, 15. And you can follow along Chris's work as well. So I'm not letting you draw 15. <laughs> so we're drawing long text here. So you can look at the photo and look at who's drawing. Either take this on your own. Okay, so we're gonna draw this portrait here. Um, I can already tell this is gonna be a little difficult. Let me see. Um, it is more straight on. Yeah, not as difficult. And again, it's like, and not that I don't think you can rise to the occasion. It's just um, giving yourself like enough to bite off of in the beginning. So my approach, my personal approach is more intuitive, right? Um, I believe in that the portrait will be lost somewhere in the process. Like there's always like this ugly part of drawing, uh, the ugly stage. So I have 15 minutes on the clock and time will begin now. All right, so when I'm drawing with the more intuitive approach, just like your still life, right? Like I just wanna get the basic shapes down. So I'm getting the hairline. So I have like the bun in the back, excuse me, I'm getting like the top of the head. So I have the, the bun in the back and I'm going around, getting the side of the head, maybe placing in some ears. Getting this jawline in here. And I'm now I'm being a little too careful, but I'm being careful placing the neck, the clothes. All right. Like for me, okay, I did that very, very fast. Um, but I like I know I'm I'm staying loose. I'm even holding my pencil overhand uh, with the overhand grip just making sure everything is fluid. I don't want to um, be too tight in the beginning of the drawing, trying to draw details just yet. So from here, let's, I'm gonna go ahead and block in the, I'm like getting this curve because I see that the eyebrows sit above the top of the ear. Um, getting the eyebrows in there, pulling this down for the bottom of the nose. See that she has some shadow on the side. I'm gonna just, I literally, this, I mean, this is what I do. I kind of just block the eyes out in this like rectangular shadow. Um, it's the opening of the mouth. And then some shadow on the side of her face. Just going to lightly go in for the hair. From there, I'm going to use that beauty blender the tool. For me, this is what I use. Maybe you're not even, maybe you're not allowed to use a, a blending stump just yet. Um, and it, it really does hide some of your mistakes, but really I, for me, all I'm trying to do is just put some light tones on the paper. You know, I'm gonna, go back in and take care of everything, but I just want to kind of spread the charcoal around just a little bit. Um, for this, I'm going to stay very careful. Go back in, begin to really define what I think is are the contours. So I'm just working with the hairlines. It seems like, I feel as though I placed that in well enough but that's like somewhere I wanted to start building off of. But also I'm trying to build a framework so I know where I can, how far do I have to travel with my pencil in my eye to get to the edge of the eyebrow on both sides. And making sure these distances are 
um, correct, making sure that they're like those, the eyebrow and the hairline is close enough or, or is, um, it matches what I'm drawing in this case. And then again, remember these eyebrows, they don't need to be a black, keep them a lighter value in the beginning. Um, and they don't run that close to each other. I'm just gonna lighten up some of this. And when I'm erasing, I'm barely pressing down, just running the eraser across, but I'm more so looking more for a tone than anything else. So I'm going to travel again from the edge of the eyebrow down to the corner of the eye, the opening of the eye. I'm drawing the top eyelash, getting the crease in the skin on. Now, I'm going to get too far ahead of myself. I need to be honest and be disciplined. I need to jump back over to the other side and make sure everything is matching up parallel. When you're drawing those ir the irises, remember it's a continuous circle. So you're constantly gonna see my hand moving in that circular form, really trying to search for it. So I, I just didn't think my drawing was particularly working out uh, using all that value and tone. So I've just kind of smeared it away. I'm going to resort back to line. So if one thing doesn't work, try an, uh, the other approach, right? So if tone isn't working, use line. If line isn't working, that's an indication that you probably should use tone. And just go back and forth in between the two. And then just like in the last one, we have a bit of a case where the mouth has an opening. So just be aware that that bottom third um, will, like the proportions will be disturbed in some way, like, or disrupted. This was kind of brought up in the previous class for the teeth. They're not exactly white and how you would draw them. It's a little bit faded, uh, a little bit um, 
darker than the white of your paper, but oftentimes you just want to have them placed in there um, without like getting those details and drawing every highlight in there. I would just leave it as is, maybe faintly put in like the middle, um, put in one or two lines, but I really wouldn't touch it much beyond that. So I'm trying to get the volume of this bottom lip. And the direction of your pencil um, should follow the flow of the face and the way it's turning and moving. Remember at the chin, that's where there's a more drastic angle change. Uh, change in the angle of the jaw. Look at the nose and see if that line matches up with the bottom of the ear. It's, I would say the ear lobe is slightly be below. Switch. Um, keep your pencil sharpened. So what I do to one side, I want to make sure I'm following up going on the other. So I'm trying to travel across the face to see where the top of the ear is at on the other side. Um, it might be even easier for me. I mean, that's one way of doing it, um, but it might also be easier if I'm confident in where I place these eyebrows at. Which I'm not the most confident, but I can use that spatial, rec that spatial recognition, um, just trying to understand the distance between these two. I'm just constantly going back and forth with my eye on the pencil, making sure I, uh, I'm kind of figuring it out visually. And that back here is pretty much just in shadow. So I'm lightly just putting that in there. And then I'm starting to see some issues as I've kind of pointed out. I don't get it right every time, but it looks like the like my jawline needs to come out a bit more. Um, but this is stuff that I've noticed over time. The, lot of years of practice and then of course you've seen my my personal art practice my my own artwork uh, relies heavily on portraiture so i'm like just uh, able to pick up on these things maybe um, faster than most or seeing like where there's a problem but it's it just comes with experiences um you know, don't lose any confidence that you have. You're probably doing better than you think, actually. Uh, I think the problem with the eyes is that they're not, my eyes were not big enough. This may not be your problem. Maybe they are too big. Maybe they're just right. But I recognize that I'm going to shift it making these eyes slightly larger. Yeah.
You have about a minute and a half left. Figure out what you think is missing. Maybe something to kind of focus on within these last moments of this portrait. Again, as you're drawing, be very sensitive to the amount of pressure you put down or be aware of the amount of pressure that you're putting down. Not everything has to be a dark, dark value. You can have a wider range of line work by doing that. Um, by uh, being aware of the, like when you're putting pressure on the pencil and not. And I think lastly, I'm just missing the definition underneath the eyes. Um, that's time. Uh, did you guys want me to cover anything else for the time being? You guys want any facial features in particular? Do you want to go over anything? You will. Anyone have any questions for quick about the artwork, the process? Chris, thank you so much for doing this. It seems like everyone's either drawn out. <laughs> Um, I'm going to share you guys an email with the PDF of portraits, some of his YouTube videos, because those will come in handy as we kind of keep breaking down portraits. Okay. So thank you so much, Chris. That was very, very helpful and definitely got us into portrait boot camp for sure. Yeah, um, no problem. Bye. 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 -bye, -bye, -bye. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I'll talk to you soon. All right.